<laughs> no. I mean, I have to be honest. <laughs> no. But first of all, may I say, Titanic is probably, out of all the films that I've done, Titanic is probably the one I've watched the most. I think maybe I've seen it three times ever. But I don't really tend to watch the things I, I don't really, some of the, some films I've done, I have never seen. Because it just is, it's just a disconnect for me. The And a lot of actors are like this, I think. The process is playing the character and making the film. And then when the film comes out, it's just a totally abstract thing. Like, oh God, see the film? Why would I want to do that? I'm like, <laughs> it's like, I've done it. Why do I have to go and watch it? It's a very strange thing. So, um, so yeah. Um, I haven't seen it. I did see it when it came out in 3D in 2012. I did see it then at the Royal Albert Hall. And actually that was kind of really fun because it's a huge screen. It was a big occasion. You know, everyone like, it's just like everyone was so excited about Titanic in 3D. And so I was happy to see it then, but I haven't seen it since then. Making the film, we had no idea. We had absolutely no idea. And, you know, even now, here I am. I mean, I'll be, I'll be 50 in three years' time, which seems so ridiculous. And here I am still talking about Titanic and, and, and the truly, truly joyful, rewarding part of all of it is that people will go and see it again. It's about to be re-released and people are going to go flocking to the movie theatres to see it all over again. And that's phenomenal. I certainly haven't been in anything since and probably won't ever be again where people keep wanting to go back and watch it. So it's just this sort of, yeah, I just have so much gratitude for that. Like how cool. It's, it's, it's totally wonderful in every way. I think the reason that Titanic kind of stands the test of time is that there is something about the experience for so many people of seeing the film that is bound up in a in another time in their lives so the sense of nostalgia and the memories around the place that people might have been in their own lives when it came out the memories of first seeing it for so many people I know it was their first date to people who they have since married and have families with so a lot of sort of swirling romance around the film coming out. And it's very significant for a lot of people, a hugely significant moment in some people's lives. But when you look back on that time that it was released, 1998, <clears throat> no cell phones, emails didn't exist. You know, we had clarity of thought in a way that I think we just don't really have anymore. You know, we, we don't have time anymore like we used to, to just sit and read a book or hold a conversation without thinking, oh, I just got to check my, you know, it's it, so there is something about being able to step back in time almost to another time that's very special. And I think that's, I think that's, that's starting to become perhaps part of why people are still drawn back again and again is that it represents something in pe people's lives as opposed to just the story and the romance of it and the music and the costumes and all of those wonderful things it's it just speaks speaks of another time in people's lives i have to say i think people should go and see it in the theater because there is nothing like the sound, the sound, especially now, you know, technology has advanced and transformed movie theaters. My God, I mean, they, they are, they're now kind of, I don't know, they're almost like auditoriums now, you know, the sound used to, was so different back then. Now it's, it's speakers everywhere. You know, you can, you literally feel the sound under your seat. It's around you, it's in you, it's everywhere. It's in your ears, it's in your chest. And so that so I can imagine actually how thrilling it will be to go and see it again in a movie theater now with technology having advanced the way it has done. And these plush movie theaters, theaters with those comfy seats and the particularly expensive buckets of popcorn. Um, <laughs> but I think, 
yeah, you just can't quite get that on an iPad or, you know, on Netflix. You know, it's just, it's just not the same. You just, it just isn't the same. Um, so, yeah, I think it would be pretty amazing. And those special effects, they were, you know, they were pretty cutting edge for where they were at. And I'm sure they've even been cleaned up again since the film was actually made. So I'm sure it's quite spectacular. Um, it isn't hard for me to believe that 20 years have passed. Um, but I think that's partly because I've had children and my daughter is now 22 years old, my eldest. And so, so much life has happened to me um, that, yeah, it absolutely feels like 25 years. And actually for us, it's 27 years because that's how long it was since we started making the film. Um, so, yeah, kind of amazing over half my life. I've been talking about Titanic and whether Jack could have fit on the door or not. My most vivid memories, honestly, are that it was incredibly, we had incredibly long, tough hours for everybody. So we had to shoot six day weeks, um, which was very difficult, particularly when we started working at night, because of course the ship sank at night under the night sky, famously clear night. So we had to have perfect weather with no wind at nighttime. And four months of our seven and a half month shoot was at night. So that's really hard when your one day off is, is, a, is, a, is a Sunday, basically. We'd get home from work at 6.30 in the morning on a Sunday. We'd get to sleep and then maybe go and have a bite to eat in the evening. And then on the Monday, we'd be back to work again and back in the same cycle of the nights again for six nights straight. So, so when I look back quite honestly, and for most people who were a part of the making of the film, that's what we all remember was, it was, it was really very tough on everybody. Well, you know, I had seen This Boy's Life and I had seen Gilbert Grape and he had made Romeo and Juliet, but it was only just about to come out. Um, but so for me, I was just, I was working with this incredible young actor who everyone was talking about in the way that people used to talk about River Phoenix. Leo was that and and I was not that at all. And so I kept thinking, oh my gosh, how have I done this? How am I here working with this amazing young actor? And, you know, we were just very good friends and, and we really had to kind of look after each other and look out for one another um, because it was hard. It, you know, it was, it was tough. Everything about the shoot was difficult for everybody, whether it was weather conditions or how long the hours were, the length of it. You know, a lot of people were away from their families for a very long time. Case in point, you know, me, I was away from my family for seven and a half months and I was only 21 years old, you know. So that was really, that was very, very hard for me. So I think in the absence of families and friends from home, we really kind of clung to each other right away, Leo and I, because of that. Um, and it was amazing working with him. You know, we just had, we were just very similar how we thought. Our sense of humor was really similar. You know, both wanted to do a really good job. Yeah, so we just had kind of like similar, also similar upbringing, similar backgrounds, you know, parents who would drive us around to drama classes and, you know, that kind of thing. So we were, you know, we were kind of cut from the same cloth in, in, in a way and not, neither of us trained you know, not professionally trained. So just that thing of feeling a little bit like we were kind of these lucky street urchins was an amazing feeling. So, and I think that's probably why we're still such good friends today. The biggest challenges in making the film, actually for me personally, was keeping up the American dialect because I'd never done an American accent before. Um, and, I, you know, I had a coach who was there every day actually who I still work with to this day whenever I have to do American accents is someone I've now known for 27 years named Susan Hegarty she's absolutely wonderful um but I look back on the dialect that I did in Titanic I hear myself speak and I'm like oh god okay no 
we could have we could have done a lot better. <laughs> I'm like super picky about it now. Um, and I love doing accents, especially the American accents. So I'm like, oh God, that could we well, why did we let that one slip through? That was not good enough. So I just remember feeling like everything had to be perfect all the time time you know how it looked the hair the face the costumes the dialect the performance you know it was we had to be at the absolute best on our a game every single day all day and 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 when I look back actually that really was the hardest part of it is that you know in amidst all of these special effects and the ship and so much going around around us and tons of extras and stunt performers and all of that Leo and I could not blow it if you didn't believe in Jack and Rose there was no point 